Hey guys and welcome back to War Thunder, it's Krebs and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the new exclusive Panther T5, a Russian captured Panther A that you can unlock through the Thunder League. More details on that in the description box below, otherwise let's hop out into a match and talk about this token of a vehicle. Alright, and this is the match that we're in, it's on Poland, Realistic Battles in the domination game mode. Now as you can tell by this panther, it's essentially the exact same thing as the panther A, but the color scheme of the turret, well, it's a shade of green. They gotta be able to tell who is ally and who is foe, huh? I mean, it's a, ca it's a Russian captured panther A essentially, and it shares a lot of the same similarities to the panther A that's already within the game. But there are a few differences, namely, this vehicle is a premium, so you get a lot of extra bonuses on top, which is nice. Uh, secondly, comes out at a battle rating of 5.7 as opposed to the 6.0 of the Panther A, which you might not think is a big difference, but it actually can be, depending on how you make up your lineup in in uh, with your tanks. Because if you're at 5.7, you can see anything down to 4.7, and there are a number of tanks that are actually at 4.7, like the KV-1Zs, like the Jag Panzer 38T, that could actually be a big difference. You could have a really pleasant match up against something like that. And also there's one more thing, and that's the lack of APCR rounds on this tank. It doesn't have that availability, whereas the Panther A has APCR rounds. But it's no big deal because, I mean, the APCBC rounds are probably going to be the, t the shells of choice anyway, because they still do a lot of penetration, 187 millimeters, and... Also, that explosive component sends all that shrapnel in all different directions, right? Now, this is one really unfortunate thing that happened at the very start of the match that... Uh, it was very unfortunate. This enemy right in front of me was trying to kill that T-34 on my team, and he must have missed. I don't think it was intentional for him to hit me, but I was just traveling on by, and it ended up going right into my side armor, and eventually he managed to take out three of my crew members. So, I'm on a skeleton crew now. I've got two out of my five guys still alive. Could you imagine how much your morale would go down if you had three of your buddies next to you dead in a tank? Well, it obviously is going to be affecting my reload rate. I mean, it still turned out to be a good game, but definitely that toll on the reload rate had an effect and could have made it an even better game, as you're going to see. But anyway, so I've got some American tank destroyers just up ahead. These are have no armor, powerful guns, very fast and agile even in the reverse and so they can poke out do damage and they could be very annoying but uh, I'm just trying to do what I can to them right now so when talking about domination I decided to go on this side of the map because we'll put it like this it's not like arcade domination where all three points are within the city there's also that one point that's on the other side of the pond now that one's kind of like out in the open kind of farther away from the rest of the points if I want to, if I went for that point, then I'd have to travel all the way around the pond again in order to get to the other points in the map, the other cap zones. So just by working in the city, I have access to the cap zones much easier. But also, I prefer this kind of aggressive brawling style in the streets, using the various streets and buildings to my advantage against opponents. It's just my type of style. That's what I prefer. But also, as I said, just keeping that momentum going by being able to easily traverse across the city and uh, have two points readily available to me. So, managed to kill a few t enemies so far, and so far so good. Now we can push up onto the cap zone, which the enemies managed to cap, but since we've cleared them out, it's time for progression. Now, the Panther... I might as well just call this the Panther A. I mean, that's essentially what it is, the T5. It's a very nice tank. Uh, if you know the Panther A, then you know this tank. It has really good armor, apart from the turret being a little bit of a weakness. In fact, the turret, the main place that usually, if you end up dying, is by getting shot in the turret. Uh, at the very front, both on the, just the side of the gun itself and also on the cheeks of the at the front, is the weakest areas. And because they're mostly just flat, so they can easily be penetrated and uh, quickly lead to many crew members within the vehicle dying. But I'm glad that this T5 is the Panther A variant, because it definitely brings some improvements over, say, like the Panther D. 
The Panther 8 has a faster, faster acceleration, more horsepower to the engine, but also, most importantly, much, much better turret traverse than the Panther A, or the Panther D rather. Yeah, much better. Oh, my light years better. So we're starting to push up on the enemies, and it's always a good t thing to look at the leaderboard at the start of the round to get an idea of what kind of allies you have and what kind of enemies you have as well. Just the factions, because it gives you an idea of, you know, what to expect, so to say. So if I see that I'm up against the Brits, then I know, well, chances are they might have a bunch of Churchills, and they're going to be lagging behind right at the back of the city. And that's exactly what happened. Now, we've pushed on the enemy really hard. I mean, if this ever comes to, if you ever get to this point in the match, in Poland, where you've ousted your enemy out of the city and you're on their side of the city, then you might as well just count it a good game. Because I, I don't think I've ever seen a match where the enemies have managed to turn it around after being pushed out of the city. Because essentially what happens is that they spawn out in the open, and they're basically sitting ducks. And then you have the cover of buildings to your advantage. And that is absolutely brilliant. So it can become a really big snowball if you manage to push your enemies out of the city. And you can make quick work of them afterwards. So this is where that reload rates I was talking about is starting to come into play. Having those three guys down just because of that really unfortunate thing at the beginning started to take its toll. Just take a look at this. I mean, look how slow those reload rates are. I'm going to be trying to kill enemies, but I just don't reload in time. If I had just a few seconds faster even, maybe I could have gotten a kill or at least a kill assist. Like this guy right here. Here we go. And fire. He's dead. <laughs> one, mo one moment he was alive, the next he's dead because somebody else took the kill. In fact, it's this T-34 just up ahead of me here. This Lord guy. I, th I, th I think he's having the, the match of his life because he's just racking up so many kills. And he's managing to do it because probably because he hasn't lost any of his crew members, whereas I have. So he has a much better reload rate. He's able to get those shells into the enemies at a quicker pace than I can, that's for sure. So we've pushed him right up to the spawn. That's an M15 right there. Look at him go, trying to get away. <laughs> a tank shell right into the driver. Well, he ain't going anywhere, and he's on fire as well. So my primary concern is right now, is Lord going to be taking this? Please, Lord, don't take it. Please just explode, die. There we go. Thank, thank the heavens. <laughs> he managed to burn to death. I don't, I don't think that's a. We should be thanking the heavens for that, should we? Now here's an enemy right up ahead. I wish it was possible to know when they had invincibility or not, because unfortunately when I fired, uh, well he had invincibility, and as you can imagine, yeah, my reload rate, <laughs> again, coming into practice. And so they've just been finished off really, really fast. Now, the game is pretty much over here, apart from this one last guy. Look at this sneaky one last guy who managed to take out my teammate, hiding in the forest. But luckily for me, Krebsy likes to hunt, all right? And I can manage to find him with relative ease. Of course, I wish I got the kill, but you know, that would be asking for too much, wouldn't it? Uh, these reload rates and having, having to lose crew members so early. But anyway, guys, that was pretty much it for the round. I managed to get five kills, which I'm pretty happy with that. Why not? I mean, it's a good example of the Panther A. As long as it's used in the correct capacity, uh, it can be a really powerful vehicle to work with. And uh, the nice thing about this vehicle is, is the fact that you also get a lot of that premium bonus on top. And you can unlock it for free uh, once you've bought into the, into the Thunder League. Well, I mean, that wouldn't be really for free, would it? <laughs> well, you have to buy into the Thunder League, and then you can unlock it that way. But it's one of the many vehicles that can be unlocked through the Thunder League. Uh, so if you want to get find find out more about that, that will be in the description box below. You can got, go check out the link and see if you can unlock it yourself. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. Until the next one, this is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys later.